Hey everybody, Mike Carlson here again, uh, ready for the sixth video in the series here for the Kativ Do-It-Yourself Vault. Uh, and this video will be discussing how to, inter how to interact in Venter uh, and the vaulted environment that we put in place uh, with all the files and whatnot. So um, short PowerPoint here, only <laughs> only this one slide. So we're going to talk about you know login uh, and login again. Yes, you have to log in through Inventor as well as the Explorer client when you have that up. Uh, we'll review how to get the project file again. We did that in the previous video. We'll do it again though. We'll review the workspace again. Uh, repeats from the previous video, um, but uh, really that drives to the importance of this, and that's what makes this whole thing work. Right, is the project file and the workspace. And then we'll talk about the actual workflow, opening files, changing them, checking them back in and whatnot. So I'm going to jump over here to uh, uh, first, let's go over to Vault. OK, so now over in Vault, uh, just to repeat again what we did before, right, is we need to get make sure that we have a copy of the Inventor IPJ to use in our workspace. And as you remember, our workspace which I displayed here is this location, right? So the root here represents the C colon underscore vault workspace. Uh, so if I right click on this file, I can see I already have a copy of it. That's what the open circle is here. Um, but if I right click, hit the get button, remember I do not need to check it out. So I do not need to hit the big button. And here you can see I'm checking out nothing, but I am downloading one file. I can select okay, and I've made sure I had a copy. So now when I come over to Inventor, um, and Inventor, uh, if I go to get started, right, I can look on the projects, and notice I already have this project selected. But if I didn't, you could do the normal kind of Inventor steps, right, browse, and browse out to that underscore vault workspace where you should see your designs IPJ, and then make that the active IPJ. Once that is done, now in your vault tab here inside Inventor, you'll notice that you have the Vault tab on the on the starting screen here. I currently am already logged in, so I'll go ahead and log off and log back in. So again, I'm going to use the same credentials. Please remember, I'm already logged into Vault here. I'm still logged into Vault, but through Inventor, this is a separate add-in, so that means I also have to log in through this. Uh, remember, and you can use the automatically log me into session every time, then you don't have to worry about hitting OK here, but in this case, put your credentials, the server, the vault, and select OK. I've now gotten logged into my vault. So now Inventor is now connected to my vaulted environment, both from a login and a workspace and an IPJ sense. So the first thing to uh, you know understand here inside Inventor is normally you know your normal workflow would have been to grab the open folder here, right, and browse to your files wherever they may have been, network, C drive, D drive, whatever it may be. That's your normal work. That would have been your normal workflow prior to having Vault. Now with Vault, instead of using the general open window, you'll notice that in open I have this little safe looking thing that we is actually an open from Vault. Also, if you look on the Vault tab, I have an open here. And if I hover over it, it says it's open to file stored in Vault. So if I select this open button, notice with my path here, I don't have the option to browse C and D drive. It's growing straight to my root, straight to my vault inside to find all my vaulted data. So, of course, now also my shortcuts. Remember those shortcuts we created in the previous video? Those show up. So I can simply jump those shortcuts and jump into that information as I need it. Here now I'm ready to hit open. Now, if you do notice on open here, there's a little drop down right next to the open button. What this does, this allows you to check what you want to be able to do. So here, I want to open, and I can check out the files in one step. This is open and check out all. The difference being, if I'm opening an assembly, um, maybe I only want to check out the file I have selected, right? So maybe if I take this assembly and hit open and check out, it'll open the assembly and only check out the .iam file. A checkout all is going to check out the .iam file, the assembly file, as well as any parts underneath it that it's allowed to. Of course, if somebody else has the stuff checked out, it's not going to let you check it out also. Or I simply hitting open and read only. In this case, I'm going to hit open and read only on this assembly. Once I do that, it's going to open up the file. 
I'm in a read-only sense in this environment. So now, you know, this is just, again, your normal Inventor environment. This should all be familiar to you, those using Inventor. And you'll notice if I click over on my Vault tab up here, I have the option to check this file out. I don't have check in. I only have check out available because uh, this file isn't checked out yet to me. Now, you can use the tab here and, and the ribbon up here if you like. I think most people, and what I appreciate more, is over here in your browser, if you hit the drop down, you'll notice you have another option for Vault. Now, I like this view because, as you can see, it shows me the view of the assembly and all of the parts. So there are a couple things that can happen here is from here directly, I can right click on any of these things and tell it I want to check out. I could even go down to some of these parts. So maybe I'm not going to work on all of these parts, right? Maybe I'm only going to work on a few of them, maybe the post cap, which you can see highlighted here as I select it uh, in the browser, or maybe the trim washer, whatever it may be, maybe even the post here. Um, you know, there's a few different options, right? Uh, you can select what you want and then check it out at that time. So maybe I'm going to select the button here and also probably this IAM and tell it I want to check out these two files. Now, you'll notice in this case it actually is selecting all of the files underneath, and that's because if you look in my settings here, I've told it when I check out a parent, to make sure that it checks out all the children that may be associated with this. I could also do the up the tree look. Typically, I would say the, though that you may want to look at always selecting this. If you don't want this, you simply uncheck it, and now it's only narrowed down to the two files I originally sold, told it that I want to check out. In this case, I say, great, I'm going to check this out. And notice now what is done. These this little these icons to the left here of the of the you know the file icon is a status, a vault status icon. So you'll notice I put the check mark into these because this file's been checked out to me. Now, if this was checked out to somebody else, it'd be stricken through. It wouldn't even give me the option to check it out. I could still use the file and view it. I just can't check it out in this instance. So now that I have these files checked out, I can easily start to go into this now and make changes. So obviously my assembly has something and I'm gonna come over to this button, right? That was my other file that I had. And uh, maybe I wanna tell this thing I'm gonna edit it, do something to it. So I'm not gonna do anything fancy to it. Um, this is not uh, this is not inventor training. It's just uh, getting you familiar. So let's just pick a random plastic and apply that, right? So now we've made a change to this thing. Maybe I could change the color to appear a little bit different, whatever it may be. I've made the change. Now when I hit return, you'll notice what's happened is it's turned red. Because I've made a change, I didn't save the file yet. So this red is saying with this asterisk, hey, this thing needs to be saved. So now watch what happens when I say save. It's going to give me the option to save the assembly and save the part. I'm going to tell it OK. Once I do that, well, the assembly didn't change, right? Nothing in the assembly changed. All I did was change the material on this part. So it didn't affect any form fit function overall in the assembly. It's just this singular part. So you'll see here that this part has a green background versus the assembly, which has this open, clear, or white background. So what the green background means is that the file on my workspace, remember my C underscore vault workspace, is newer than what it is currently showing in the vault, which is true because when I did a save, I'm saving it to my workspace. And now I'm taking the file and going to, now I can tell it I want to check it in. You know what, my changes are done, I'm good, and I want to check this in. Typically, you want to go to the higher level and check in a file. Now, this file didn't change, so it's really not going to check in anything here. It's in a sense going to do an undo checkout, but it will check in this new version of this particular file. So if I tell this thing to check in, it'll say, hey, I'm checking in the assembly, I'm checking in the button, and I can uh, uh, add a comment here at the bottom. Um, and don't make this a book. Make this simple for you to track back on. Uh, so I'll call it, um, uh, let's see, change but material and simply select okay again i have those same setting options here to include children include parents i'm going to go ahead and include children and my visualization files so these are the dwf viewable files right they're going to show in the background and you'll see they're being published by this symbol right here is the dwf if i was to turn these off 
Notice how it has strikes through on the DWF and doesn't create the, uh, the visualization files. I'm going to select OK here. And my files get checked back into Vault. You'll see that they're now everything's open. It's a, all, everything's available to check out again. Even somebody else can check it out. Now, so this was a new file. So remember, as we went through this, I selected Open from Vault, opened up a new file. If I wanted to place a new component inside this assembly, it would be the same way. So in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and hit Place. And I'm just going to go and uh, grab a random component. Let's do something not in the tuner. Let's do this padlock, even though this stuff doesn't really uh, match up perfectly. We will just go ahead and tell this thing to open and place in the assembly. And I'm just going to set that in. And notice what it's done now. So if you remember, I checked this file in. I didn't check it back out again. But now I'm making a file change to this assembly because I'm adding a new file in it. And it's saying, asking me if I want to check this thing out. Yes, I want to check it out. Yes, I want to put one instance of that in. I can hit save again because it's red. I can also just come back into this thing, tell it to check in, and it's going to ask me if I want to save it. So kind of in a, in a singular click, I get uh, I, I save myself an extra click, basically, is what happens, is save, hitting the Save button. Um, and we'll put uh, Added Part. Select OK. So again, using Open from Vault, using Place from Vault. That's the important pieces for getting our data from Vault into our Inventor environment. Now, what do we do if we have a new file? So let's say if I'm just going to do something new, and let's just uh, do a new part here. Right, so all I've done is select new, same as we've always done in the past. And, you know, I can start to draw something if I want to. Again, we're not going to be too fancy here. Let's uh, just draw something quick and finish it off. So all I've done is started a new. I haven't even hit, hit save. Now when I'm ready to hit save, this is when it becomes important for you guys to remember the workspace. Now, of course, you're using the Inventor project file, which should be pointed to your workspace anyways. Um, so you click workspace. <coughs> it's going to guide you right into the designs folder. So you see I'm under C, Vault Workspace Designs. And in here, maybe I'm going to add this new to my tuner. I'm going to go ahead and put it tuner. We'll call it a uh, tuner block and save it. Now, if I switch, flip back over here to my vault view, you'll notice I have the open circle, which means I have this file in my local workspace, but it has that little blue plus, And if I hover over it, it's telling me that the file is not in vault. Well, I'm ready for this thing to get in vault. I simply right click on it and check it in. It's in the workspace. It knows what folder in to go to because it's in that correct folder in the workspace. And I simply select OK and add it into the environment. If I come over and look at a couple other things as far as Vault goes, we have a refresh. So if we see things like a red, there's red um, refresh buttons that may show up here. Uh, you may want to refresh your data. That means to get the latest and greatest versions out of the Vault. Of course, you can use all, all the icons up here. You have the same options available from here. Uh, it's just really whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you can do the vault options here, and this is just basically to use larger buttons, which are these symbols right here. Uh, don't mess with the dialogue suppression until you get used to everything and understand what's going on. And then start to come in here and customize this because some of your workflow can even get faster based on the suppression rules that you put in place. Now, if I come back over to vault here and go into my designs folder and go into tuner, right? And remember we were working on uh, this, uh, the uh, tuner here. And look at my history on this. Before we didn't see this because we didn't have history, right? But now I can clearly see that this thing's gone through some history. And remember those notes that I put in place? Those are the little spots, the comment spots. And this is why I said don't write a book. This is just makes it easier, easy traceability for you as a designer as to what you've made in between each one of these versions. And you can see the preview has each one updated. Also, if I jump over here into the preview and click on this, this is going to give me my DWF preview into the file. 
Uh, and now I can see this. I can see it with the, the part added. I could even roll back to history, roll back to the version three of this DWF, right? And this one is, while it's not current, it's telling me that this doesn't show the part. I don't think we had DWS generated for two. Uh, yeah, that's I didn't generate them initially to begin with. Um, or no, sorry, two was a rename, so it doesn't regenerate the DWF in that instance. But here you'll see that I also have it in this environment. Coming back over to Inventor, just to kind of refresh everything we've been through so far. So the key is open from vault. Always use the open from vault button change your browser view when you need to check in and check out. I suggest you use the browser view over here because it gives you your status icons. It's very familiar and then you can right click and it gives you what options you need and what options are available to you at that time. If you start a new file, go ahead and do it just how you always would. Start a new file. Just when the key comes in to make sure when you hit save, you're going to be in your workspace and browse to the folder where you want to save this thing. So as far as workflow with Inventor, that's the key to doing all this. Um, again, your workspace being in your Inventor project file and using open from vault. Always keep that you know, open from vault, keep in the design workspace and you should have no problems and keep flying along in your design. So that's it for this video. Uh, I, you know, Hope it's all clear for everybody, and uh, this should get you going and be able to start getting you familiar with Vault and, and get you in a position to be able to uh, you know implement it and understand it for your company and how you may need to set it up for you. Thanks, everybody.